So if we wanted to put this red ball into the corner pocket, then we'd need our cue ball to impact the red ball directly behind it in a straight line running straight through the middle of the pocket. So if we were actually playing the shot from where our spotted cue ball is positioned, then that spotted cue ball would have to travel forward and end up in exactly the same position as the playing cue ball in order to put the red in the corner pocket. So obviously in reality we don't have a second cue ball so we need to imagine that cue ball in that position which is why we call it the ghost ball. So we imagine that cue ball in position, we focus on that spot and then we walk round back round to behind our cue ball keeping that spot in mind and then we play the cue ball forward putting it back into the exact spot where that playing cue ball was in order to put the red into the corner pocket. Now, unfortunately, there's a slight problem with this theory and there's something else that we need to take into account. So if we set this shot up with the ghost ball directly behind the object ball in line with the pocket, then the theory works fine and we put the red into the corner pocket. The problem occurs when we come round to a much steeper angle. If you follow the theory and set up the ghost ball behind the object ball as before, you might expect the red ball would be potted into the corner pocket, but unfortunately this is not what happens. In reality, what happens is because the cue ball is making contact with the object ball at a fine angle and travelling away from it, the friction between those two balls throws the object ball forward slightly, so the line ends up going towards the near jaw and you end up missing the pot. So to play this shot correctly and pot the red ball in the corner pocket, we need to make a slight adjustment. The way that I do this is to compensate for the throw effect by aiming for the far jaw of the pocket. This means that we need to adjust the position of our ghost ball ever so slightly just to take this throw effect into account. Then when we play the shot, the throw effect counteracts the fact that we've over aimed and the ball ends up in the middle of the pocket. Now judging how much the ball is going to be thrown off is quite difficult and there are, there are lots of factors at work. So really the only way to get a feel for this is to practice the shots over and over again. Try from different angles gradually getting wider and wider to see if you can get a sense of how much the ball is being thrown off course from where you were originally aiming. Just be aware that you know when, when you play the particularly fine shots the ball is going to be thrown out slightly and it's something you need to, to compensate for. Thank you.